Hello and welcome to what is very definitely not a vlog. In my lockdown video, I had a surprising number of people in the comments saying, please, please do a video of you making bread. Now, I'm a little bit reluctant because a lot of other narrowboat channels and indeed non-narrowboat channels in this lockdown time are doing a lot of cookery videos. And I do not want this channel to turn into a cookery channel, not least because I don't cook and have no idea what I'm doing. But I just want to steer a little bit away from that. But I did have loads of people saying, would you do a bread making video? So what I've done is I've gone back from my old footage and about a year ago, I filmed myself when I made bread for the very first time. It was never intended to see the light of day, particularly this film, but I, I just shot it as a curiosity, really. And it, it's not high production values at all. I, you know, I'm going to keep making excuses for this, but I've had people say, David, upload anything. Upload it. We're bored here at home. Upload any old tat. Any old tat you've asked for, any old tat I can provide. Be careful what you wish for. So here it is, me making bread. Apologies if the sound on this is a little distant. The camera is over there for reasons that should become apparent fairly soon. I am over here and I don't have my radio microphone with me, so I shall have to shout and project and become a theatrical person to do this video for you. As you know, I don't do cooking. But I have decided, for reasons that slightly escape me, that I should like to have a go at making some bread. As you can see, I have ingredients, one of which is flour. Flour will go everywhere, hence the camera being at a fair distance. I've got bowl, I've got um, bread flour, I've got salt, got yeast, got butter, got a measuring bowl. And I've never done bread before, I, I had a go with a bread making machine once and it wasn't terribly successful, but I've never actually tried it manually. So who knows how this will turn out. Anyway, I thought I'd share it with you. It's certainly not going to be worthy of a vlog, I don't think, but a little bit of the behind the scenes boating that some people sometimes ask me for. Now, the instructions on this are absolutely tiny, so I'm going to have to squint at them. Right, get your ingredients together. I've got those. Mix the flour, yes. Yeast, yes. Sugar, no. And salt, yes, in a big bowl. I have that. Using your fingertips, rub in the butter until only fine crumbs are left. Mix in the water with a cutlery knife. What other kind of knife is there? Aren't all knives cutlery? Ah, anyway. I need weighing scales or something, don't I? 500 grams of flat. I'm going to need scales. Hang on. Possibly another bowl for the weighing of things. Right, hang on. What did, right, how much flour? 500 grams. Right, I'm zero this. Okay, zero. Okay, 500 grams. <laughs> you can't see this, but the local duck army has spotted me at the window. And as I do feed them in the mornings, they are all just swimming around here, hoping I'm going to throw them some more food. But they've had their food this morning. Uh, uh, oh, I have a feeling this is going to make a mess. I have no idea why I bought such a massive amount of flour. That is what? I think it's 1.5 kilograms. Three kilograms of flour I've got here. That's ridiculous. Right, 500 grams. The flipping thing's turned itself off. Right, 500 grams of flour. I've got to It turns out, 500 grams of flour. Right, under. Right, under. Right. Right. Basically, mix it all in a big bowl so I can now decant that into that and measure out 7 grams of easy bake yeast. Right. Easy bake yeast. It's not going to be easy. I think we know that. They can call it easy all they like. Right. 67. 7 grams. 4, 6, 7, 8. Blast. Near enough. Um, right, that goes in there as well, doesn't it? 
mix the flour, yeast, sugar and salt. Right, I don't have I don't have sugar. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Teaspoons. Right, I've got a measuring thing. Half a tisp. Salt. I've got some other salt actually, which I'll use up first. One half teaspoons, three of those, that's half teaspoon. One, two, three. So far, this is going well. So now I need the final ingredient was one tablespoon of soft butter. Well, I've got spreadable butter, which is part butter and part vegetable oil. Vegetable, vegetable oil. I've also got some actual butter. But I wouldn't call it soft. However, if I do a bit of this, it might soften up, I suppose. But what one tablespoon actually meet? Why couldn't they have given me a, a measurement in grams or something? One tablespoon soft butter. I mean, I've got that. But is that a tablespoon? An official tablespoon, not just a spoon, an official tablespoon. Who knows? This is why I find cooking so irritating. Because you need so much gear for all the measuring and the mixing and everything. I mean, you have to spend a fortune before you can actually do anything. Or you just have to kind of guess. And I don't like guessing. I like, and I hate recipes and ugh. Um. Right, I'm going to warm this up for a bit. Talk, talk amongst yourself for a second. Oh, I'm supposed to have some water. Half a pint of hand warm water. That's half a pint. And that water is at boat temperature, which is sort of warmish. The drawer is stuck. What on earth is doing that? Okay. I'm going to call that a tablespoon of butter. Lightly grease the mixing bowl with some oil. Oh, suddenly they mention oil. They didn't mention that in the ingredients. Lightly grease the mixing bowl with some oil. What sort of oil? Ah. Put the dough back in. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel. A clean tea towel. As if I've got a clean tea towel. Huh. Ah. Leave to rise till doubled in size. Leave for an hour. Okay. Mix all this up. Basically, start by mixing this all up. Well, the butter seems to have already vanished, although I'm, I'm not sure it, is, it can't have done. But I can't find it anymore because it's broken up into such small pieces. Flour and the salt and the yeast will be getting a good mixing. Rub in the butter until only fine crumbs are left. Well, I'm... I don't really know what they mean by fine crumbs. I've just got flour in here. I can't feel the butter at all. It's not, um, it's not very self-explanatory. There are no crumbs of butter. Am I really only supposed to put one tablespoon soft butter? 
Well, that's what I've done. Mix in the water with a knife. Mix water with a knife? Again, that... What? What? All right, I'm going to mix the water in with a knife. The mixture is getting sticky. I believe this is supposed to happen. There is annoyingly a fair bit of mixture that is just dry at the bottom. I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. Right, mixing the butter. Tip onto lightly flour dusted surface and knead for 10 minutes. Or, or, use the dough hook attachment on your mixer. No, I do not have such a thing. Well, I've sort of mixed it in. I'm not convinced about this. There's a lot of flour at the bottom that hasn't mixed in in any way, shape or form. I'm going to take an executive decision and add a drip more water because there's all this flour and stuff at the bottom that isn't mixed in. What about all this? Why won't you mix? Mix, you bugger! What's wrong with you? Mix in! Okay. Right, where's the instructions again? A lightly flour dusted surface. Need for 10 minutes. Lightly grease the mixing bowl with oil. Put the dough back in. Right, okay. Flour there. Lightly floured surface. I did clean the worktop before I started, I should point out. Is that enough flour? Is that lightly floured? What the hell does lightly floured mean anyway? This is nonsense. It's just nonsense. Right, what do I do? Tip onto the lightly flour dusted surface, knead for 10 minutes. Yes, right, tip. Okay, should I wipe the bowl out, do you think, before I put the oil in there? Probably. I've got some vegetable oil, I'm gonna to have to use that. I'll, I'll take that as... That's good enough. Right, knead this for 10 minutes. This will be the less interesting portion of the video, which I will probably fast wind through. <laughs> 10 minutes of this is gonna kill me. They don't tell you what the point of this all is. No idea why you need it. Or really how you need it. It really would be a lot easier to just go down to Tesco's and buy a loaf of bread for a quid. Lightly grease the mixing bowl with some oil, put the dough back in, cover with tea towel. Oil. Lightly grease. 
Uh, put the dough back in, cover the bowl with a clear tea towel, leave to rise till doubled in size. There we go, that's in there. Clean tea towel. Right, cover with clean tea towel. Leave to rise till double the size, about an hour. It is now half past midday. I'm gonna need a nice, nice sit down after all this. One hour has passed. This is normally the time where I take the covers off whatever I've been leaving and find it's exactly the same as it was when I put it in there, but let us find out. It has been proving for an hour. Oh! Oh! Oh my word! Oh yes! That is bigger than it was. That's it, that's easily double the size. It's working, I tell you, it's working. I'm actually I'm actually shocked. Wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a photo of that. Because that's crikey. Now, there are further instructions on the thing. It says, knock back the dough by gently kneading just five times to get the air out. Mould into a smooth oval and lift into a lightly oiled tin. I don't have a tin to do this with. I simply have a tray, so I'm going to have to do a sort of whatever shape it grows loaf. Although now I'm looking at the amount there, it's going to overspill this <laughs> massively. This is going to be a monster. Oh my God. Okay, right, okay, right. So I need to, I need to give it a little bit of a, little bit of a, how do I get this out? Just, just pop it out, I suppose. Whoa, look at that. A little bit soggy on the bottom there. I hope that's not a problem. Right, this is supposed to be lightly oiled. Although it is a non-slip tray, so I don't know if it needs it, but we'll do it anyway. A little bit of light oiling. There we go. Right. Need five times. I do like to reread the instructions several times over just to make sure I know what I'm doing. Knock back the dough. Knead it five times to get the air out. Mould into a small oval, sort of that shape. Put into lightly oiled tin and then cover for, again with a tea towel. Cleanish tea towel. And leave to prove until doubled in size again. That's it. Right. Do a switch. Not here. Just leave. Four. That's five. Right. Let's shape it into something. Vaguely resembling a loaf. Pop it into the tray. Cover with the cloth. If that's going to double in size, that's going to need a little bit of a um, little bit of slack on it, isn't it? There we go. Right. Pop it there. It's now half past half past one. Give it another hour. Hmm. And I will check back with you later. Another hour has gone by and just looking at this under the tea towel, I can see it's been having another decent rising session. And oh, oh my, you can really smell that sort of yeasty smell. Well, the oven is on. I've had that on for about 10 minutes, heating up to gas mark six. I don't know what that is in centigrade. Let's uh, see if the things are... 200 centigrade, 180 in a fan oven, or gas mark six. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that the oven on the boat here doesn't actually respond to the temperature control at all because I tried putting something in on a three the other day, which should have been low, and it came out absolutely cremated. So I think the temperature sensor doesn't work and it just blasts out full heat. So it's probably even now 
actually on something like a seven or eight instead of the six it needs. But we will find out. That's an hour. Let's unwrap this little package of delights. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that. Let me bring that close. Look at the size of that. You know that film, the uh, comedy sci-fi film, Evolution with David Duchovny, where the stuff just keeps growing. This. Yikes. Whoa. Right, what do we do? We, we've done that. Da da da, doubled in size again. Yes, I'd say so. Preheat your oven. Lift the tin into the middle oven shelf. Bake for 30 to 35 minutes. All right, I'll just stick it in the oven. Uh, that way round, I suppose. Set your watches. It is half past two. Back in half an hour. Half an hour in the oven. Can't really smell it, but it, there's definite hint of bread smell. It looks terrific. The instruction said 30 to 35 minutes. It's had 31. I'm very anxious about taking it out. I did try making a cake before, and because the oven only does full blast, that was the thing that needed the low temperature. It, it just crisped totally on the outside and was entirely uncooked on the inside. This does at least want high temperatures, so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Now the, um, the instructions on the tin say take it out and tap it, tap it on the base of the loaf and check if it sounds hollow. Although what you're supposed to do if it doesn't sound hollow, I'm not entirely sure. Presumably put it back in a bit longer. Yeah. Oh! It says to cool it on a wire rack. I have one of those. Hang on. Wire rack! Okay. Alright, here we go. Holy moly, mother of burnt! That's the good side. That's the burnt side. I think we can safely say it's coming out. Ah. Oh. Well, I'm a little disappointed if I'm honest, because it did only have 32 minutes and the instruction said 30 to 35, so it's not like I left it in there for hours. But that is very, very burnt. Now, if you turn it round to the other side, this is where the back of the oven, the, the glass door was. See, that looks better. Even possibly not cooked on the bottom. I'm beginning to think that this is not a good oven. The cake was ruined. And obviously, where the bread was near the flame, which is at the back of the oven, it's completely overdone it. Um, oh, at least it's not stuck to the tray. Right, let's... Let's try that, try that tapping thing. Oh, I don't know about hollow. Hard to tell, really. I'm thinking it's not cooked on the bottom, but as we know, is very well cooked on the top. I'm going to let it cool, and we'll have to see when I cut it open what it's like. It's now a little while later, and the loaf has cooled down and I have cut it into pieces and I have tried a slice and you know what, apart from the little bit of burnt crust, the rest of it is alright. Here's what it looks like inside, it's all soft and squidgy and actually not bad. It doesn't really taste very much, 
You know how sometimes you eat a piece of bread and you think, mmm, that's nice and bready. It's not, it, it's a bit, it's a bit bland, it needs something else in it. And I don't mean throwing walnuts in it or, or I'm, I'm not a fan of breads that have things in them. Bread to me should be plain and then you add stuff to that afterwards. But anyway, beside the point, it kind of worked. So an interesting experiment. To be perfectly honest, I'll probably just keep going down to Tesco's for my bread.